Okay, we've been looking at how work and energy are related. Now let's look at how work, energy and power are related. And I think this basically sums it up when we talk about the power because we're talking about how much work, which she's obviously doing, she's moving this tyre, how much work is being done or how quickly it's being done. Right, let's review. We know that work is force times distance and I've gone through here and given us all of these things that are reminders that work is in joules, forces are in newtons, capital N, and distance are in metres. So make sure your values are in metres before you even go near this equation. So once it's all gone, so we can work out how much work we've done, but we know that work is also related to energy. Now, down here, I've reminded you about the fact that to move anything, we need to think about Newton's first law, and that's the law of inertia, and that basically says that you must apply a force to cause an object to move or change the way it moves. Now, I'm paraphrasing those, and I'm sure your physics teacher would be most upset. All right, let's move on. Now we've also noticed here that the relationship with energy is that work is equal to the changes in either kinetic or potential energy. And we can use that to our advantage. Remember that there's a little delta sign, the little pyramid means change. All right, and again, if I, did, if I look at the units, work is in joules, and so is kinetic energy. So if we want to think about power, we think about how quickly it's happening. In other words, the rate we are doing work, or the rate or speed we're doing work. So that means we have to think about work per time. Now when they were settling this out, they worked out that power is going to be equal to the work per time, and this is the formula we use, but the work is in joules, as we've said before, and the power, and the time, sorry, the time is in seconds. Now the units of power are capital W, which can be confusing because we know that work is also capital W, here in the formula. But if it's a unit, it must be talking about watts. So if we go from that, then we find that if power is going to be equal to work on time, it's also going to be equal to change of energy on time. Now this comes true in quite a few of the calculations we do. And this tells us, since we're measuring these in watts, and energy is in joules, and time is in seconds, that means we also know that a watt is equal to using one joule every second. And that's something that's very, very useful to know. More later.